our thoughts create our reality as we perceive it with our five senses in this physical body and on this earthly plane of reality because we process our reality with our brain. Our brain communicates electrically. In the brain is anchored the consciousness principle. The consciousness principle is anchored in the brain and works through the nervous system. The consciousness principle is what allows us to grow conscious of self as an expression of God. The unfoldment of consciousness, the process of growing conscious, the unfoldment of the consciousness principle is intimately connected with mind. Mind is the tool we employ to think thoughts. Thought is an electric wave. Our electric thought waves anchor the consciousness principle into our brain. And our brain, again, communicates electrically. So our brain communicates electric thought waves to our organs of perception, which process the information and create the analogous perception of reality. And so this is how we each end up seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, and experiencing our own thoughts. And as we change our thinking, we change our subjective perception of reality. Again, we each end up seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, and experiencing our own thoughts because our brain and nervous system communicate electrically. Our brain and nervous system communicate electric thought waves to our organs of perception, which create the analogous perception of reality as we perceive it in our bodies, which have been in, to which our five senses belong, on this earthly reality. The key insight here is, again, that the consciousness principle is anchored in the brain and works through the nervous system. Everybody knows that the nervous system communicates electric impulses. But what most people do not realize is that these electric impulses, which are running through our nervous system, are electric thought impulses. Because the whole function and purpose of the brain and nervous system is to relay and ground and anchor the consciousness principle. And thought is the agent of the consciousness principle. And so what's running through our nervous system, all the impulses, all the electric impulses which are running through our nervous system, are electric thought waves, which are causing or creating our subjective perception of reality as we subjectively perceive it. And this is also how a hypnotist can hypnotize an individual to hallucinate any of the five senses simply by putting a thought into their subconscious mind, which, forming part of the consciousness principle, works through the nervous system and our organs of perception, as we know, form part of the nervous system. So, what is so great about the ability to think? What's so great about the ability to think is that the ability to think allows us to create reality. And so, the ability to think like a god would allow us to create a godlike reality. The ability to think allows us to grow conscious of self as an incarnation of God. The ability to think allows us to become a co-creator God. Every thought is an opportunity to create reality. And every thought has the power to create a new reality. And so every th thought is a new opportunity to create a God-like reality. And every new thought is a new opportunity to create a meaningful and purposeful reality. And so every thought becomes an opportunity to create, to use our consciousness in planetary world service. 
And so what that means is that every thought counts. Every thought counts because every thought is an opportunity to create reality. Every thought of every human being counts. Every thought that you have ever thought counts. And every thought you will ever think counts. And every thought you're thinking right now counts. Every thought counts so much that as a matter of fact, we are embodied thought quite literally. So actually, you know, if every thought counts, wouldn't it be interesting to count our thoughts? Let me say it again. If every thought counts, wouldn't it be interesting to get an idea of how heavily our thought power counts? Let me say it again. If every thought counts, wouldn't it be interesting to get an idea of how many thoughts we actually think, let's say, on a given day. I mean, if the ability to think is the mark of humanhood, if the ability to think is what distinguishes the human being from the subhuman being, if the ability to think is what allows us to grow conscious of self as an incarnation of God, since thinking is the agent of consciousness, and consciousness is what allows us to grow conscious of self as an, relation, as an, in, as an incarnation of God. <laughs> then wouldn't it be interesting to get an idea of how many thoughts we think a day? Maybe that could help us grow more conscious you know, of how powerful we are. Still, our thoughts create our reality. So how many thoughts do you think we think <laughs> on a day? Ever thought about that? <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> and what I came to realize is, actually I did some research to see if there has been done some scientific research on the project or on the subject. <laughs> and what I found out is that there hasn't been done a lot of scientific um, projects on the subject. But I did find a few scientific <laughs> projects that have been done. And so what I found out is that there was one scientific uh, research project that concluded that we each think about 12,000 thoughts a day. And there was another research project which concluded that we each think about 60,000 thoughts a day. These were the two extremes that I could find as far as scientific research projects, as far as it concerns scientific research projects that have been done on the subject of how many thoughts we each think on a given day. And so that felt like a rather big gap and discrepancy maybe even. The one says 12,000 thoughts a day and the other one says 60,000 thoughts a day. 